So I wanted to say sorry for not being able to make this a little bit sooner, but I wanted to definitely give my thoughts about a couple of the fights that happened this past weekend. Um, uh, first and foremost, uh, Cal Yafai, who successfully defended his WBA Super Flyweight title against Sugar Murunaka in what was actually a tougher fight than I expected. Honestly, when I had initially seen Murunaka and I had heard that he was going to be the first um, title defense for Cal Yafai, uh, I, you know, I checked him out, uh, I checked out a couple of his fights, and, uh, you know, I didn't really, I wasn't particularly impressed, especially with regards to the fighter that he had fought just previously to Yafai, um, where he won a close, uh, close majority decision over Hiroyuki Hisataka, and Hisataka had utilized a style that I thought was actually fairly similar to Yafai's, only not as sharp and not quite with the same level of physicality that Yafai can provide in terms of um, pop on his shots as well as kind of strength on the inside being able to kind of muscle you move you around the ring I didn't think he quite had as much as Yafai has shown um, in recent fights especially against Luis Concepcion uh, but Murunaka put up a hell of a fight um, it, he actually I thought uh, momentarily stunned or hurt Yafai on a few different occasions particularly to the body um, a couple of different times to the head as well the left hook right on Yafai's jaw was landing pretty nicely he was countering really really well with it um, and, you know, even though Yafai was landing a lot of the flashier shots in most of the rounds, I thought Murunaka was coming right back, you know, in almost all those same exchanges. So some of those rounds were, you know, tough to score, and I actually wound up uh, giving Murunaka four rounds uh, total. Um, so I had a 116 to 111 in the end. You know, Yafai, of course, dropped Murunaka in the second round. And from there, I mean, it was it was a pretty competitive fight. Um, the judges didn't see it as close as I did. Uh, they had it 118-108. Uh, 119 107 times two for your fi um i believe the commentary had it uh 117 to what would that be 117 to 110 um for your fi yeah because i had it 116 to 111 uh but um yeah you know your fi definitely won the fight but he definitely had a, a bit of a diff more difficult time than i think uh most people expected out of murunaka uh you know murunaka a, fa a fairly good fighter um you know not necessarily like a, one of the elite fighters uh from japan he's not he's not on the night you know a level or even like the kose tanaka or the kazuto yoka level you know he's i'd say a level or two below like their quality of technical ability and just general ability really um you know he's a, he's a kind of a high volume guy doesn't necessarily punch especially hard not particularly quick um does things all around fairly well but he's more of like a volume attrition type fighter and uh incidentally even though he d isn't necessarily exceptional in any one of those given attributes i thought he provided a, a pretty stern challenge for kai yafai you know a challenge that yafai definitely um needed in order to be able to learn from as well uh, so, uh, it'll be anybody's guess exactly how Yafai is able to do in the future against uh, somebody that's able to apply that level of pressure. I do know that Eddie Hearn had um, basically said in the, the immediate post-fight that he wanted to have Yafai make one more defense of his WBA strap before he goes on to potentially have an, any kind of unification fight. Um, if he holds true to that, I would love to see Yafai against Johnny Casimero, the former IBF uh, flyweight champion, and I believe he was the WBA light flyweight champion. Uh, I think it was the WBA. I'm not exactly uh, entirely sure about that, though. Uh, but, you know, Casimero is a guy that, you know, he's well-proven. He's uh, he's only, what is he, about 27 now? But, I mean, he's been a world champ since his early 20s. Um, guy that's uh, flown all over the planet, uh, fought the likes of Luis Lazarte in, in Argentina, Ramon uh, Girales in, in Mexico, um, you know, fought and de defeated I'm not wrong, wrong uh, in um, in China. And he's, you know, he's a brutal fighter. He should definitely show that last year when he defended uh, the IBF flyweight belt that he had against um, Charlie Edwards over in the UK, one of uh, Kaya Fai's countrymen. Went in there, just busted Edwards up, beat him down, uh, stopped him, and, you know, definitely halted um, the, the, the recent surge of British fighters kind of taking over titles in every weight division, you know, just across across the entire sport of boxing. You know, the last, the last two and a half, three years really has been a, a major boon for, for British boxing in a major way. But um, Casimiro, at the very least, uh, put a, a slight halt to that, that continuous uh, forward charge. And who knows, maybe he'll be able to do it again against Yafai. And to me, the you know, just the, the fight makes sense uh, financially and otherwise. Um, you know, Yafai is definitely a, a tough, legitimate fighter, you know, two-weight champion. And the guy at... 
uh, super flyweight that I think um, could definitely hold his own as well. He's a big puncher. He's a guy with a, a good amount of aggression. He's he's shown out to be very effective in most of his fights. And a guy that, um, you know, just he's he's a fun fighter to watch. And I think the styles clash between him and Yafai would be a good one. As well as the fact that, you know, I think the British public is already familiar with uh, Casimiro considering the fact that he had that fight with Edwards. You know, amongst other, you know, uh, pretty pretty high-level fights. You know, the, the, of course, the two fights they had with Amal Runrong and the aforementioned fights that I mentioned about, like, Luis Lazarte, uh, Murti Matalane, uh, Ramon Herales, etc. Um but uh, otherwise, uh, you know, if if Yafai does wind up going after the unifications, I, I did see that there was a, there was some rumors about the possibility of Eddie Hearn trying to get the winner of Gonzalez versus Suisa Ketsurongwasai in the ring. I'm um, not sure if necessarily that would happen, considering the fact that the winner of that fight is supposed to be fighting the winner of the proposed Qualos Cuadras versus Juan Francisco Estrada fight. Um, not So, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if he'll be able to get into that, but I wouldn't, honestly, it wouldn't favor... Uh, Yafai's chances against either Gonzalez or Suisakat. I just think that they're they're too much for him. I think Gonzalez is too sharp and too much volume, um, too much hand speed as well, actually, on the inside. And then Suisakat, I think, is just too brutal, just physically. You know, he's just too much, uh, and, and the body shots, especially from, from So Rung Vasile. He's, you know, I thought if he would, you know, if Yafai was getting clipped by some of those body shots and feeling him against Murunaka, he'll definitely be feeling him against uh, Suisakat, along with the fact that, you know, Suisakat can definitely get r- real uh, slick with uh, with that head. In the in the in the ring as well. Although I think um, the British uh, referees would probably be a bit more um, on top of uh, keeping him from doing that or taking points or disqualifying or what have you. Um, but I mean, outside of that, uh, you know, if if I was to fight Joran Lacas, I think that would be a, another pretty solid fight, another um, 50-50 type of fight. I'd actually give if I a little bit of a better chance against Casimiro stylistically than I would on Kaz. I think on Kaz, especially uh, when he's at mid to long range, is really, really difficult. You know, he's definitely up on his toes and he has, you know, pretty long arms, fairly tall for the division, um, as opposed to like Inoue and Gonzalez who are a bit more Yafai's height. Um, Gonzalez is slightly shorter and Inoue is slightly taller. Uh, and cause I think is a little bit more clearly um, a taller guy, a bit of, of a rangier guy. Good amount of snap, good amount of pop though. But I think he'd be an, another um, excellent opponent for um, for Yafai if uh, Yafai is not going after the the big uh, stars of the division in his next fight. Uh, but moving on, I wanted to also make mention of uh, Kiko Martinez versus Josh Warrington. Um, you know, Josh Warrington has been talked up for. Uh, world title challenge the last couple of years, um, whether it be against Lee Selby or against uh, Gary Russell Jr. You know, he's kind of been uh, talked, uh, bandied about, ballied about, I guess you might say, um, with uh, regards to both of those names in particular. Um, here he was fighting a former champion, Kiko Martinez, and of course, recent contender. Um, a guy that a lot of people were thinking was really on the downside. I mean, I definitely... Uh, considered him that but at the same time you know a guy that it seems like only really like the the true elites of any given division are going to be able to defeat in Kiko Martinez I mean you know he lost to Frampton he lost to Quig he lost to Santa Santa Cruz but Josh Warrington isn't any of those fighters he doesn't have the power of any of those fighters is really I think the, the the particular thing that should be mentioned and um honestly I thought Kiko Martinez won this fight um I thought he won it close I had it seven rounds of five for Kiko uh, the judges, of course, wound up scoring it a majority decision for Josh Warrington. Uh, but, and I could see how you could have uh, Warrington winning, definitely. You know, I think that he was um, he w- had a higher work rate than Martinez. Martinez's um, shots, his, his like clean, effective work, a lot of the times was done in spurts, especially in the middle rounds where he appeared to get a little bit tired. And, you know, Warrington was definitely working every every minute of every round for the most part. Even if a lot of that work wasn't necessarily the cleanest, it was a little bit slappy, it wasn't necessarily completely putting uh, Kiko Martinez on notice at all times. You know, there was a couple of times where Martinez definitely felt the, the shots and, you know, he backed off, you know, he did what he wasn't. He was a little bit more hesitant to throw in certain um, aspects, but uh, for the most part, it just seemed like it was really Martinez's fight. It was really a, a strong uh, showing from from a vet like uh, Martinez, a guy that you know he was able to kind of wade in there and um, you know do good work to the body on Warrington. You could definitely see that he hurt Warrington in the body on a couple of different occasions, especially I think it was in the third round. He hits Warrington with a right, like a right hook cross to to the body, you know, to, to Warrington's left side of the body, you see, like, Warrington, like, you know, almost, like, kind of crumple up, like, slightly, like, you know, put his, his elbow and arm down in order to try and protect that side of his body, like, immediately afterwards, um, but, 
I mean, as it stands, honestly, I can't really see Warrington uh, winning any of the belts. I mean, even against Lee Selby, a guy that I haven't really thought particularly highly of. And, you know, if, you, if you've if you seen some of my past videos, I've always said that he's he's really the weak link of the, the world champs at 126 pounds. Um, but, you know, against uh, against Gary Russell, I think Russell's too quick for him. Um, you know, Russell has his fight coming up against Oscar Escondon this weekend. And if Escondon beats him, I think that Escondon is, you know, similar – to, to Martinez in almost like a cross between Martinez and Russell I think he's a little bit too quick and a, and a little bit too strong for somebody like a Warrington um Leo Santa Cruz I think throws in just as high a volume and even higher than Warrington as well as having more power and just you know he, and he I think he's really better technically as well you know even though he's thought of a lot in a lot of ways as like a come forward fighter he can box really well actually off the back foot and he's actually pretty defensively sound as he's coming forward at you you know he has that high guard that high tight guard almost like a like a winky right and he's just kind of crowding you just like a like a tank like a heavily armored tank just kind of uh slowly coming at you walking you down breaking you down um uh you know you got uh like i said lee selby before i think selby's just a little bit too slick for him um i think he'd be able to out finesse warrington and then you have oscar valdez who i think is just uh, too much power just plain plainly speaking too much power and warrington isn't necessarily the most defensively sound and being able to completely take a lot of your offense away from you and I think Valdez would have um, just the utmost confidence and be able to just kind of walk Warrington down and, and throw power shots at him whenever he pleased uh, when it, whenever he felt like it um, so that's uh, Josh Warrington versus Kiko Martinez in a nutshell as well as uh, Kaya Fai successfully defending against uh, Sugar Mononaka and I will catch you guys in the next one peace <laughs>